Foam, resin, polyfill. These things and more can bring your fursona to life and turn it into a wearable, huggable being. Eh, 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 eh. <coughs> Ew. Hey everyone, my name is Stormy the Wolf, and today we're going to talk about different types of fursuit head materials and discuss certain materials you should never use to make fursuits. Some of this I've talked about in a previous video with a similar name, <laughs> but since I've made that video, I've learned more about the suit making process, plus I'm collaborating with an exceptionally talented suit maker that goes by the name of Mujiwara Cosplay. Hi, I'm Maria from Mujiwara Cosplay. Fursuiting can be fun and empowering, but when it comes to the materials used for building suits, it can get a little expensive. You may be tempted to seek cheaper alternatives or even recycle old material to make a new suit, but in some cases it's not a good idea and can even hurt you or the suitor involved. Materials you can use. For foam bases, the most common type of fursuit head material is upholstery foam and is used by both pros and beginners. It's super durable. Lightweight, easy to work with, comfortable to wear, promotes excellent airflow, and generally has a lifespan of 7 to 10 years. And these types of heads are best suited for Toonie style suits. So if you are brand new to suit making and want to make your own base, foam is the way to go. If you're aiming for something a little more realistic, resin heads are an excellent choice. Resin tends to do a better job of highlighting the intricate details and contours you'd normally find on realistic fursuits. Sculpting the finer details on a foam base can be extremely difficult to the point of just being flat out impossible in some cases. You can only get so small with foam, whereas with resin, the only limit is your imagination and skill set. You have a lot more control, but at the same time, you really gotta know what you're doing. Kinda like Linux, I guess. Lastly, resin heads don't have great airflow properties, so makers will often install fans, <sighs> I wish I had a fan right now, to compensate. They can get rather toasty on the inside. They can also be quite heavy and can't be tossed around like foam heads, otherwise they'll literally break. And if you're looking for the best of both worlds, try 3D printed bases. These things are super durable. You can make them into pretty much any shape you can think of. And because the sculpting process is done via software, you can see what the head will look like before you even print it. You can fine tune, do and undo whatever that needs to be done. What's even better? You can scan a foam or a resin head base, import it into the app, and make a 3D model out of it and print copies of it. In the fursuit world, 3D printed heads are still relatively new to the community. And I, I say that because they've been around for a few years now, but they're not exactly common. And the reason for this is most of it boils down to cost and experience. As time passes, however, these printers will probably get cheaper and more makers will pick up on this method. Varaform. This is a lightweight foam or plastic mesh that's been used in stage costuming for years and a few years ago found its way into fursuit making. It's not the easiest material to work with, but if you can make it happen, the material promotes tons of airflow, which means you will stay cool, plus it's slightly flexible, which means it won't break easily unlike plastic mesh, which can collapse easily. However, some makers have stated that it's uncomfortable to wear and incredibly difficult to work with in certain scenarios. Materials to be cautious about. EVA foam, a more dense type of foam, and you may have seen it as these puzzle floor mats. And it's something that I think most makers believe is better suited for things like ears and horns, because as you can see, it's, it's very stiff and it's not really a breathable material. But I believe it could be great for head bases if it's used the, the right way. And by that I mean you can stack it and carve it like upholstery foam. Because it's super lightweight compared to resin and combined with foam clay it could be great for something like cheap skull bases. One more thing I'd like to add is if you're making a tail or digigrade padding, try polyfill. It's a white fluffy lightweight stuffing that many fursuit makers use that can often be way easier to manage as opposed to spending all day carving foam. Flexible, hugs the body a little better, and under normal wear and tear, it'll stay in good shape for years. Too many perks not to use it unless you want something really rigid in a specific shape as opposed to the roundness of polyfill, which I totally understand. Might be better for realistic suits actually. 
Materials you should never use. Camping pad foam. It's pretty cheap and can be found at most big box retailers. On the outside, it looks like a suitable material, but after use, they tend to hold a lot of sweat and moisture and will actually start to stink and rot due to a chemical reaction. Pass on this one. Old couch foam. This is generally a bad material to use for suit making because although the foam may appear to be in good shape and retain its structural integrity, it's probably seen all kinds of nasty things in its life. Dust mites, stains, old animal hair, sweat, or worse. Mold and mildew. The foam might appear to look and smell okay, but if it's used in fursuiting and it starts to absorb sweat, you might get hit by an awful, disturbing odor. You'll have a bad time and probably get sick after a while, so uh, don't do that. Some of these materials, especially if it's from even older furniture, might even contain toxic fumes. So yeah, just, just a bad idea overall. This presents a hazard to both the suit maker and the wearer. That being said, however, if the foam somehow comes from brand new furniture, it might be okay to use for things like digigrade padding. It's always good to recycle material wherever possible, just don't put your health at risk for it. Styrofoam. While it is lightweight and not too difficult to sculpt, the problem lies with its durability. Resin heads are already fairly delicate, but styrofoam has a much lighter breaking point. Obviously, you could throw a styrofoam head against the wall, it probably won't break. You throw a resin head against the wall, it's probably gonna shatter. But what I mean is you can't put a whole lot of force on a styrofoam base. And if you're wearing it all day, being silly and booping people and stuff, at some point, something's gonna go snap. It's simply too fragile for fursuiting purposes, but on the bright side, you could still make some awesome things with it. I suspect there might be a way to reinforce styrofoam bases, say like with metal rods and wiring, but that's just a theory of mine. Sponge material. Hmm, do I really have to explain this one? It's just a horrible idea overall for making a fursuit. They absorb moisture like it's nobody's business. That's literally what they're designed to do. Can you imagine being in a fursuit parade, out in the summer heat, working up a sweat, and wearing a sweaty sponge? Don't, because I can smell it already. You literally drown in your own perspiration. Do not want, and I would hope you don't want that either. Cardboard or paper mache. It's just not durable at all. It will not survive the elements. Paper also isn't breathable. It absorbs moisture just like a sponge, which can lead to mold and turn into a biohazard of sorts. It's bad for you and bad for everyone around you. You deserve better than that. Don't make fursuit heads out of cardboard. Please, I'm, I'm begging you, please don't do that. But yeah, that about wraps up this week's video. But yeah, super special thanks to Mujiwara Cosplay for helping me with this collab. Well, thanks for having me here. And if you want to learn more about fursuit making, I strongly suggest you check out their YouTube channel, which you can find up above. Also, I am not a suit maker, Yuchiwara is. Even with their help, was a little tricky because I'm still learning so much about fursuit making. So if I said something wrong, that, or something I should have never said, or something I should have mentioned, please let me know in the comments. I, I, I want to learn more. <laughs> but yeah, if you found this video helpful and informative, give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and share it with all your other furry friendos. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!